Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast for South America, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. Well, over the weekend, this incredible video of this Arcus cloud or shelf cloud or roll cloud emerged here out of Argentina. And I'm imagining some very strong straight line winds and some very heavy rainfall for that. But just thinking about thunderstorms in Argentina, I wanted to find where this was. So Pico uh, Truncado is pretty far to the south well outside of Argentina's main, uh, you know, corn and soybean growing area, which is what I tend to focus on, which is here in the central and northern part of the country. Now, remember, when we think about South America, Brazilian weather is dominated by a big monsoonal circulation. But uh, much of Argentina has very similar weather patterns to the Midwest of North America. There's a big mountain chain here in the Andes Mountains to the west, broad plains in through here with very fertile soils. In fact, just thinking about that, I got asked the question over the weekend, well, how big is the growing area in Argentina? So I, I thought I'd show you. I overlaid Illinois, Iowa, Minnesota, and Indiana over their soybean production map, as you can see here. And so we're talking about a substantially large area. In fact, I probably should have included more of this region with another state. Maybe Arkansas could be added right into there. Uh, and maybe another one here in the north. I mean, this, it's a very, very large growing area. And just like during the summer for the Midwest, this time of year, the, the precipitation pattern is defined by weak low pressure systems and thunderstorms that tend to form on the weak boundaries that, that, that flow through the air. Now, remember, they come uh, again from the west to east, but the fronts are moving to the north, unlike what we have, have here in the Midwest. So with that as just a bit of a backdrop, how much rain, rain was received from February 21st to, to 28th? And I see about an Iowa-sized hole there and a, about an Arkansas-sized hole here over some very productive ground. And even back over toward Cordoba, widely scattered. In fact, I looked at several rate, uh, um, weather stations this morning in and around Cordoba, and a few of them picked up in the last week, um, you know, 10 to 30 millimeters of rainfall, which would be up to about an inch, but many locations here missing out on the rainfall. Some better precip over toward Buenos Aires, but there's a lot of pockets due to the nature of thunderstorms that were missed. And those areas did see some much above average temperatures. Now going up to Brazil, can you see that parts of Mato Grosso, Mato Grosso do Sol, uh, getting into this part of Bahia, uh, you know, Minas Gerais, we, we were dry in this area, uh, drier in this area and warm as well. You can see it right in through here. And some pockets of southern Brazil missed out on a lot of precipitation, while most of it was focused much farther to the north in uh, parts of Mato Grosso and Tocantins, where some areas picked up over six inches of rainfall. Well, that wet pattern continues for Mato Grosso, Mato Grosso do Sol and Paraná this week. And this is going to be the area where we're actively trying to harvest one crop and soybeans and get safrina corn in. And we know about those delays. But as we kind of play out here uh, over the next seven days, there's about a Minnesota sized hole right there that's forecast to be dry and only scattered precipitation to the south of it. The best rains are going to be over here toward the Andes in northern Argentinian growing areas, which means some of the drought concerns we just mentioned are going to continue uh, into the next week or so. It'll also be drier in eastern Brazil. We compare that to normal and you get this map. So we see that some pockets in through here will get an extra two to three inches of rainfall, again, continuing to slow down the harvest efforts, while there's drier in eastern Brazil and drier conditions in, uh, in much of Argentina. And because of that, we look out here into week two and we see the same things taking shape here. Now, uh, let's take this longer term view, kind of blend in some teleconnections because the pattern that you now see emerging as we get out here from March 8th through the 15th, where we're continuing to see wetter conditions, and this is something the European model has keyed in on and done quite well with, wetter conditions here in Brazil's east and north and central growing areas, while drier to the south, will also be met with much warmer conditions in Argentina where that rainfall does not occur. So there could be some places in Argentina that go the entirety of February in the front half of March without measuring precipitation. And the above average temperatures of last week and then forecast over the next two weeks could really start to erode on some of the, the quality of the crop. And I'm thinking specifically right here uh, around Santa Fe where I've seen uh, some, some of the conditions that don't look as favorable. Now, is there teleconnection support for that pattern? We see that the MJO is over here in phase six, and it will likely be moving through phase seven over into phase eight, as you notice. And that tends to be wetter, as you see here in phase eight in eastern Brazil through Brazil's central and northern growing areas and drier south. It's hard to see, but it's drier to the south. So that's certainly supportive over the next uh, two weeks in the pattern that we saw. 
but b bridging this out looking longer term, we spent much of the month of February with a positive Antarctic oscillation. And it's now forecast to dip back down toward zero and possibly come down here into minus one, two, maybe even a minus three standard deviation event. Now, why do we look at that? Well, like I said, the, the part of Argentina that we're growing all these crops in has a very almost Midwestern like climate to it. And just like our weather patterns midsummer are dominated by thunderstorms and dominated by the jet stream and weak passages of low pressure centers, so is theirs. And so if we see the Antarctic Oscillation going back into negative, it has historically correlated with better precipitation in this region and drier north. But we've got to see it get down there and, and stay down there. And there's not a lot of strong evidence that it's really going to do that and stay there. But if it does, it would make the week three forecast make a bit more sense. As you look out here to almost, well, what would be the equinox, the beginning of fall for them, spring for Northern Hemisphere, uh, we do start to see above average precipitation coming in here. But I have to step back and say through February and the front half of March, if we continue to see pockets of drier and hotter weather, is it possible to kind of revive this crop with a, you know, a third and fourth week good rainfall event in March in Argentina. I think that's what's going to have to be watched quite carefully as we move through this new month. So I'll keep you updated. I'll report back to you on Thursday. Thank you so much.